Hello everyone, in this video let us discuss uh, how to use Jira software for software development especially when you have to manage uh, multiple projects. Now this is a very common question that uh, people uh, ask when they are coming from a legacy tool or maybe when they want to use Jira and they have never really used uh, a tool like Jira or maybe they have been managing their work using uh, Excel sheets or maybe using uh, emails and they know that Jira can definitely help them but they're not really sure how to start their uh, journey, how to set it up in the beginning and how to uh, use the right set of uh, not just tools apps, plugins, but also the processes. So in this video, I just want to talk about it uh, and uh, I thought I'll probably uh, make this video because this is a very common thing and a lot of people I believe uh, will benefit from this. I hope so. Now, of course, you know, I'm now trying to be a bit more organized. So, I, so I've made my notes and I'll probably uh, try to organize this video. Uh, by referring to these notes. So I, I, have, I have some some points here that I want to, of course, cover. Now, the first thing is <clears throat> you have to figure out uh, how your teams are organized. Now, this is a very important because uh, when you are using a tool like Jira or any tool, basically, you have to work with people. You have to work with uh, different uh, teams who will be doing uh, something. So you have to figure out in the beginning uh, whether you have uh, one team working on multiple projects, or you have uh, two teams working on two projects, two teams working on four projects, and uh, how big is your team, individual team? Are you talking about uh, a team with five people each, or maybe you have uh, teams with uh, uh, maybe five people in uh, QA, or maybe two people in, uh, in uh, your, uh, for example, design or any other department, any other field specialization that you may have. So when an organization is trying to do something, trying to deliver something, they have they have people and usually those people are organized and that organization within organization is called as team. So you have to figure out, figure out that particular part. So how your teams are currently organized because this will be uh, very important when we set up things later on. So we'll come back to this team part later. Now, if you are developing a project or maybe you have to deliver a product in the market, so it could be a project or a product, but, I, but assume that I'm talking about a project. But when these projects are being uh, developed or when, when these teams are working on those uh, projects, you also have to figure out and uh, get some clarity about uh, what these projects are all about. Are we talking about uh, five different projects but those five different projects are basically doing the same thing. For example, let me give you a very simple example. If you're talking about uh, developing an app, and this is a very good example because it makes sense, I think so. Now, if you're developing an app, usually apps needs to be developed um, on different platforms, iOS, Android. Uh, and uh, these days, when uh, people develop something like a product, and they launch it in the market, there is usually a website, there is, there is usually a, a mobile app for both Android and for uh, <clears throat> iOS. And uh, people who are working on these uh, different projects, they are different in terms of their skill set and their experience. You need people who can uh, uh, create this uh, architecture for you. For your backend, for example, you need people who will uh, configure uh, the CI, CD pipelines. You need people who will uh, be your product managers. You need people who will be uh, doing the day-to-day -day project management, or you can say scrum masters if you're following uh, agile based practices. So once you know how your teams are organized, then of course, uh, make sure you also do the same thing for your projects. And uh, we have to figure, figure this out in the beginning because based on this uh, understanding whether you have five projects doing totally different things and five different teams uh, allocated to 
deliver or work on those projects then later on this information will be used to set up your uh, your jira configurations and processes and of course not just jira but any other tool but of course you know i'll, I'll focus on jira because jira is in the center of the uh, tool set and uh, one thing is uh, one thing which is also very important. Uh, I'm talking about again on projects. These projects are they uh, trying to deliver something which is uh, contributing to a big common goal? For example, if you are developing an an app for Android and iOS, and also you have a website, so these you may have three different projects, and they're all doing uh, something that will contribute to your product your your big product that you may have for example if uh, if you are a bank for example and you are a startup bank these days banks don't really have branches these new fintech companies but they do have mobile apps so your mobile app is basically your your retail banking for your customers so people log into their mobile app and they will do transactions they will use it to make payments and take a look at their statements. So that app is of course available on different platforms and uh, you may have a website where people can, can do some transactions, uh, similar things of course on your online net banking. So when you have these different projects, are these different projects uh, also, so first of all, do you, do you need multiple projects? Yes or no? If yes, then are those projects doing something similar? Is there any, relationship between those projects so, so this this information is again is going to help you later on now the next thing that i want to talk about is the duration of the project are you developing which is uh, something that you can de deliver to the market within maybe a week or maybe a couple of months or maybe a quarter or maybe a couple of years for example i worked with uh, a travel agency a very big travel agency by the way and uh, they were using of course jira that is why they called me but they were actually delivering a complete project within a week so they used to launch various campaigns and the duration of the campaign was you know, nothing but uh, one week so let us say today they will receive this requirement okay we have to launch this campaign campaign and for this campaign their deliverable was nothing but one landing page that is it so all they were doing is they were uh, asking people from the design team to uh, deliver some uh, graphics they were asking the uh, the content writers to create some content and of course you know in in the end they were just uh, creating a landing page so that they can uh, launch it in the market and they used to do it uh, within a week so the, the the total duration was nothing but one week and that is really important if you are uh, maybe imagine that you are uh, managing this in Jira, you can have a separate project for that one week duration and that might work but you will end up with lots of projects if you have multiple teams. So this in, this information is again very important like what is your visibility, how far you want to plan your work. Now the next point is how your projects are broken up and I'll probably use this traditional term of work breakdown structure. Now usually if you are let us say following agile and you maybe are thinking of uh, implementing safe or something similar to safe where you have initiatives and you have epics features then uh, those epics are broken down into stories where things are managed by individual teams and then of course within stories you have subtasks in jira now do you have this hierarchy or not or maybe you want to create this hierarchy because in the beginning you may want to start with the uh, initiative like your ceo or your uh, top management will tell you someone that you know we have to deliver this or we have to basically capture one you one 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 market like capture uk market by quarter four or capture us market by quarter three something similar on those lines like initiative and how you break up that initiative into epics and then stories is something that you have to um you have to of course plan in jira and jira needs to be configured and everything around uh this work breakdown structure this hierarchy uh, will be managed not by just some apps but also the processes and uh, 
how you're going to configure uh, your Jira later on. Now, talking about, uh, because we are talking about Jira, let us also talk about, uh, which is my next point, tools at different levels. Now, if you are talking about this hierarchy where you have initiatives, but even before you start working on the initiatives, maybe you want to create a place for your top management to plan the work, maybe somewhere in Confluence where they will write down the requirements and they will, of course, do some brainstorming and then they will work on the ideas, like, okay, let us do something, but it is nothing but an idea, but then they, they will, of course, uh, uh, get more information, more clarity, do, do some market research, and then when the idea is uh, ready to be developed, then they will probably create a requirement page in Confluence, and then they will move it to Jira to track the work. And if we're talking about Jira, so we, we, we're talking about Confluence, then we're talking about Jira to track the work. Now within Jira, you may need some apps or you, you may need some, uh, some functionality like advanced roadmaps, maybe you need some uh, uh, automation apps like Scriptener, or maybe you need uh, Easy BI for uh, reporting. And then uh, when you have actual development, your software development teams will be using Jira to take a look at their work, but uh, you may need to integrate Jira to their development tools like maybe GitLab or GitHub or Bitbucket. Maybe you need to integrate Jira with Bamboo or Jenkins or other, other tools. So you have to figure out these things and uh, based on this information so far, you will get some clarity on what tools you would be needing because uh, these days uh, uh, you have to implement uh, DevOps and DevOps is not really an optional thing. You have to do it. Either you're doing it or you're not doing it. So uh, for, for supporting these processes, you need uh, different tools and you need uh, a, a consultant like me, for example, to uh, help you with that. So it is, it is very important what all tools you would need at uh, different levels so that your stakeholders can just look at their uh, high level plan and uh, they will look at the overall progress. So we are 50% there, but uh, we might not be able to achieve the objective or this initiative. So they need that, that information and you need to basically support people at different levels. For example, your developers, they don't really care too much about uh, the initiative, but they focus more on what they have to deliver in this particular sprint. Now, Talking about the progress, how are you going to, pro to to track the progress? What exactly is the progress for you? And how you are going to estimate the work? Are you, use, are you using story points? Are you using uh, number of hours? So this, in, this information is also very important. And finally, I would say the actual methodology is, uh, again, very important. Are you just going to uh, work in waterfall model or agile or scrum or Ganman or maybe a combination of bo both? or maybe you have some uh, hybrid model of your own. Maybe you want to implement SAFE. Maybe you want also want to implement uh, DevOps practices at the same time. So this is, of course, uh, again, very important and you need uh, to maybe consult uh, people who are uh, uh, experienced in doing these things, not just uh, telling you that use a tool like Jira, but also, uh, also guide you uh, from the beginning of your journey. So in this video, that is all I wanted to uh, you know, talk about. I just wanted to give you some, some ideas, some thoughts, and uh, I, I wanted to give you these points so that you can also think about uh, uh, how you are going to use uh, a tool like Jira for software development, but not just delivering one simple project, but maybe you have multiple projects, and maybe you have a, a team of maybe 500 people in your organization, maybe more. I mean, it depends. But when you when you when you ask these questions to yourself, or maybe to your stakeholders, or maybe when you discuss these things internally, you will get a lot of clarity. And based on that, when you approach a consultant, when you when you ask a consultant or maybe anyone who is doing at last in consultancy, uh, they will be able to guide you properly. And uh, and that is all. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.